Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Brian Trench, and I'm delighted to welcome you here on behalf of the Celsius Group here at DCU, about which I'll say a word in, in a moment. Uh, a very particular welcome, if you don't mind me just drawing attention to it straight away, to the members of the Walton family who are here. Philip, the son of ETSW, uh, his wife Anne, and their son Ian. Um, and Philip has assured me that they're keeping physics in the family going, that his daughter is a physicist, just as he, his brother, and his sister uh, have been physicists as well. Um, as the title of this event indicates, um, we're recalling something that happened 80 years ago tomorrow. In fact, there was some doubt as to whether it really happened on the 13th or the 14th, but I'm sure Brian will put us absolutely right on that, Brian Cathcart. Um, and we're doing so in the context of Dublin City of Science 2012. So we're looking at this not just as a key moment in 20th century science, which of course it was, uh, but also in terms of its wider cultural, social resonance. Um, and Brian Cathcart in particular in, in his uh, book, this wonderful book, The Fly in the Cathedral, and in the uh, talk he will give us now in a moment, uh, looks at how the news about this discovery was managed, in fact, unsuccessfully. An attempt was made to manage it. I'm setting off some reactions here that I didn't intend. I'll turn it off. Uh, it's possible that the tie is interrupting it, uh, is interfering with it because the, the, these are actually high energy uh, events that are going on this tie. The tie is actually from CERN. Uh, there you are. I, I have to mention that at some stage. Um, what was I saying before that? Yes, um, indeed, that this is a, this is a bigger event than just th that the event of 14th of April was not just a singular scientific event, but also was an event with bigger cultural and social resonance. And uh, this is one of just two, I think, is that right, Brian? Surviving pictures that were taken by the media, indeed, where the three gents made themselves available to the media, just long enough for two photographs to be taken. In the middle, Ernest Rutherford, the head of the Cavendish Laboratory. On the left, Ernest Walton, and on the right, John Cockcroft. And that was on the 2nd of May, taken on the 2nd of May, 1932. And on that same day, the Irish Times, in an editorial, celebrated a triumph of science. Uh, and it remarked that the average man's knowledge of the atom is vague, and thanks to recent fiction of the scientific school, rather terrifying. I think that's a reference probably to H.G. Wells, which isn't that recent, but there you go. Um, and it talks again about the plain man knows only that science has been striving in recent years to release and control the stored vigor of the atom as in earlier ages it pursued the philosopher's stone and that the splitting, in inverted commas, as we had it also in the title of this event, of the atom was an essential factor of success. It goes on to talk about the plain man a bit further. Uh, and talks about the possibility of the splitting of the atom. Um, with the splitting of the atom, man becomes master of a destructive force, uh, or could become uh, master of a destructive force that enabled him to hold the world to ransom. This is a reference to the fiction of a scientific character. While Lord Rutherford's announcement is silent upon such horrific possibility, possibility it is difficult, he states, to say to what this discovery may lead. Well, we're in the fortunate position 80 years later of being able to say to what this discovery has led. Uh, uh, and not all of it necessarily entirely welcome. Uh, at the end then, it says, it must be a cause of pride to all Irishmen that one of the two victors of the atom, Dr. E.T.S. Walton, is a young graduate of Dublin University. Uh, the Celsius Group, which is hosting today's event, um, set up about five or six years ago, to support and to undertake research on the cultural, ethical, legal, and social issues in science that gives you Celsius. It happened to be the 250th anniversary of the birth of Celsius, so he was kind of in our, in our consciousness at the time. And we've organized annual symposia and seminars uh, of various kinds over the years, uh, including hosting the visit of Bruno Latour very recently to DCU, one of the pioneering figures in social studies of science. 
and there are a number of PhD students associated with the, with the group. Uh, in organizing this event, as I said, we are conscious that we are in the year of Dublin City of Science. Uh, and in doing this, we're trying to contribute in some way to the putting into mainstream culture, and I can't find a more elegant way of saying it, but I can in French in a moment, uh, putting into mainstream culture science, scientific institutions, scientific discovery, scientific uh, developments. Actually, it's the uh, French theoretical physicist who writes also essays on science, Jean-Marc Lévy-Leblanc, who refers to la mise en culture de la science, the placing into culture of science. So that is partly what we are trying to achieve with organizing an event uh, of this kind, as indeed many other events of the City of Science uh, year are also doing. Uh, one measure of the place of science and culture, one small measure, might be the presence of representations of scientists on stamps. And actually, if you were to uh, consider scientists and scientific issues on Irish stamps, you would say that Ireland was a very scientific culture. Indeed, there is the only person ever to have been featured twice on a commemorative stamp is a scientist. Apparently, you only get one chance at doing it. So I'm afraid, Ernest, you've had your chance, and this, is, this was it. This was on the anniversary, the, the centenary of his birth in 1903, 2003, this stamp was issued. Um, uh, William Rowan Hamilton actually appeared twice, but that's largely due to De Valera's uh, great uh, interest in William Rowan Hamilton. Um, but here's a little one for you. If um, Ernest Walton has been commemorated on the stamp of Ireland, what other country do you think might have commemorated Ernest Walton on a stamp? This is a little, this is a little bit, actually the Walton family are excluded from answering this question. Um, this is a little bit about the physics of philately or the philately of physics. Uh, the answer is St. Vincent and Grenadines. Now I bet you none of you thought of that one. Um, and actually, St. Vincent of Grenad and Grenadines has actually issued a series of stamps uh, with Nobel Prize winning scientists uh, uh, on them. Anyway, I hope we've established the, um, the context for this. And we're going to hear, first of all, from uh, Brian Cathcart, whom I had the pleasure of introducing in a quite different context at another conference just two months ago and meeting at a previous conference uh, just before that, earlier in the year, one about journalism history, the next one about media diversity, and today about the history of nuclear science. Um, he may have time to tell you how he came to be interested in this, but he's been writing about it for over 20 years, and I think the first article that I came upon uh, by Brian about Ernest Walton dates to, back to about 20 years ago, and he's published uh, this wonderfully uh, well-told story, The Fly in the Cathedral, which I recommend to anybody who might be, even be bemused by the science of uh, the so-called splitting of the atom, uh, strongly recommended to you. It's available in paperback and from most good bookstores if you try hard enough anyway. Uh, Brian is a, a journalist by background, a journalism lecturer, a journalism professor now in Kingston University uh, in, in Surrey. Uh, and as I say, has a long-standing personal interest that really is outside of his professional activity as a, uh, as a journalism lecturer and professor um, in the history of nuclear science. Um, Really, his book, uh, I just was speaking to somebody outside about his book, and uh, he said to me, well, a science teacher said to me just recently, this is the best book about science that I know. It really is popular science of a kind that we need much more of. It tells a really great story, but in the telling of the story and in the painting of the characters and in the description of the apparatus, uh, it really does lead us into the, the, the core of the scientific discovery process itself. So a great pleasure in welcoming Brian Cathcart. <laughs> 